You may have clicked on this video because you're trying to learn how to become a short-term rental investor in the Cleveland market. You're trying to figure out how to passively do short-term rentals in Cleveland. You're just very interested in the Airbnb, VRBO, uh, housing, traveling nurses, other medical workers, right? If that's you, you're in the right place because that's exactly what we're going to go through right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. If you're interested in real estate, Cleveland real estate, or any type of real estate investing, I hope you will follow us. Uh, stick around, subscribe, the whole shebang, right? Because we are out here teaching investors how to make their money in real estate investing. We are showing you not only the good, but we like to show you the bad. I want you guys to get a feel for what this business really entails, right? I've sold over $200 million dollars worth of investment properties in Cleveland, right? So a lot of the stuff we teach you, you could do it in any market, right? It's it, You could use these strategies on your own. But if you want to go one step further, you want to do what my client Mike has done. You want to partner with me, partner with Holton Wise to have us be your full boots on the ground turnkey team to do these investments together. We can do that as well, but you'll have to invest in the Cleveland market, right? Because that's where we are at. That is our home base, right? We have the largest portfolio of its client in Cleveland. And today, Mike, we are looking at an Airbnb property for you that's going to need a little bit of rehab, right? What you've asked me to do is find you nice, high-end, quality turnkey, not turnkey, close to turnkey, I should say. You want high quality, close to turnkey Airbnb rentals, but you want to have some type uh, of uh, repair component. You don't want all the pieces to be put together for you. You'd like to gain a little bit of sweat equity. And I think that that is what this property is going to present for you today, right? Very minimal repairs, very easy repairs, just nice cosmetic fixes allow you to put your own flavor on it, brother. And we're going to get into exactly what's going on with that deal, how to structure the deal and how much money you're going to make off the deal right after this. Hey Steve, what are you doing? Oh nothing, just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my Steve, take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. Let's get into the meat, right? Airbnb investing, it's cool, it's great, but how do we make it all work, right? How do we get the thing moving? How do we put the pieces together, right? Of course, my team will handle everything for you guys. Everything. Property management, maintenance, insurance, tenant screening, tenant leasing, the whole shebang, right? Putting it on platforms, Airbnb, VRBO. Uh, there's platforms uh, that specifically target healthcare workers, right? Like we get a lot of people very interested uh, <clears throat> in, in short-term rentals because we have so many like medical facilities downtown, right? We get a lot of like contracted nurses, right? You get the traveling nurses and stuff, right? So when you guys hear me talk about short-term rentals, right, it doesn't always necessarily mean we're going to be running to people on vacation. That's not always the case. We might be doing like a three-week stay, a 45-day stay, a 60-day stay to like a traveling nurse, right? There's all types of things. And when you're right downtown like we are, all right, that's, that's, that is big, man. That's where they want to be, right? You got downtown Cleveland. You got Asia Town. We got all the stuff. And then right over here on this side, you got University Circle, Little Italy, right? So... This is like a very popping area right here. This is where stuff's happening. You get people that want to, you know, hit up all the, the cool nightlife bars, restaurants, right? University Circle, that's the big medical action, right? We're right over there. We're right next to everything. And, of course, you got more stuff, obviously, downtown Cleveland. You got everything, right? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the Q, the Brown Stadium, you name it, we got it. So if people are on vacation, this is where they're coming. Oops, I'm, tr I'm trying to get you guys a street view here. If they're on vacation, they want to be close to downtown. If they're working in the medical industry, 
that's where they want to be as well, right? So you see we got big old buildings, and then here is our building. This is pretty cool. This is a town home. Here, I'll just cruise you down the street a little bit more. You can see what's going on. You got some, like, big industrial thing here. And you just get some more skyscraper action over here because we are downtown, right? Now, this is cool. This is a town home, right? But what's nice about this is there's no HOA, right? We are on the corner unit, right? So we cut the grass, you know, us, Holton Wise, we'll cut the grass for you. You don't have an HOA to worry about, which is good. Because when I do short-term rental investments for you guys, I, I try to avoid properties with HOAs, right? Because that's another added layer of scrutiny. It's another uh, hand in the cookie jar. And sometimes they uh, place regulations on you being uh, unable to do short-term rentals. Sometimes there's even HOAs that don't let you do regular rentals, right? So when I do the short-term rental stuff, guys, I like to focus on properties properties that don't have HOAs, right? The city of Cleveland, they've already gone through, legislated all their Airbnb stuff. They are cool with Airbnb. Uh, we're not going to have any issues with them. Uh, the property, quite nice, man, right? It's pretty nice. Now, this is a 2000 build, 2005, okay? So it's 16 years old, right? So there's no tax abatement. Uh, just so you guys are aware, right? In the city of Cleveland, uh, they want to get new development in there, right? They want to get new development in, in targeted neighborhoods, right? So we're seeing a lot of, you know, newer development, right? So right now, today, if you want, you could buy a property in Cleveland that's a brand new build. You get a tax abatement, but you ain't going to get it for this price, right? You're going to have to pay uh, quite a hefty sum. Uh, but we do get lucky, and in the hotter neighborhoods, the more trendy neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods where the action is, sometimes we can pick up properties like this that are pretty damn close to new for a good price. Like this one, 2005, right? So the builder, when they bought it, you know, they took advantage of that tax credit, right? Because what we don't want to deal with when we're doing these short-term rentals is like 100-year-old properties, right? We want some newer construction, right? And that's exactly what we get here. Now, as you can see, it's pretty nice, but we should spruce it up a little bit, right? I'm just putting a budget on this, 15 Gs, right? 15 Gs to probably repaint, freshen it up, right? Like, I think it's about 15 years old, some of the carpet in here. So we want to spruce it up, but we don't really need to do much. Here's your parking uh, for your guests, right? All in all, very solid, just 15 Gs, and then we'll put in 25 Gs, right? $25,000 to furnish it, right? So as far as the price goes to buy it, they're asking 188 It was under contract. It fell out of contract. To my understanding, it, it seems like the buyer uh, didn't get their financing. So what I would like to do is we'll come in kind of aggressive, right? I'd like to try to pick it up at 160 Now, that's where we're going to start. Do I 100% think we're going to lock it down for 160 Not sure. But I think that's a relatively decent starting point. If the seller balks at that, uh, you know, it would make sense to go up another 10k or so, but I would like to start there because they just fell out of contract. They've been on the market for quite some time, so I'd really like to try to get aggressive, see if we can't get you the best deal. If we could pick it up at 160 with the 15k in Reno, 25k in furnishings, that should be a $200,000 investment. Now it's a three bed, four bath, so we're gonna sleep a ton of folks, uh, but it's not like a super huge luxury single family home. So there are going to be properties that we can get higher nightly rents, right? Um, this is something that I think we're going to do more of like the 30 day and 60 day rentals to like healthcare workers and stuff. So our average nightly rent is going to go down. Uh, so all told, I factored out roughly $8,500 in monthly income right, is what our gross could be, but after you factor in our expenses, including a vacancy expense, right? Now, when we're doing, like, uh, longer rentals, like 30 and 60-day rentals, of course, we're going to have lower vacancy during that time, but our daily rent, average daily rent, is going to go down. When people are only renting it for one or two days, it will remain higher. So what I did is put together this chart over the whole shebang. Right over the whole year, this is what I believe the average should be. I believe you will average a total profit of approximately 25 because in the area we're seeing an average over the whole year of 38% vacancy. Right, so we have to factor that in as well. Obviously, our vacancy will be greatly reduced if we get the 30 and 60 day medical rentals, uh, which is what we definitely want to target since we're so close to downtown. Uh, but as far as like vacationers, when we get the higher premiums but shorter stays, they're coming mostly in the summer months. So you know, there's going to be fluctuations with how we bring in the money. So you just got to look at what I believe we'll do, right? So I believe we should profit for you approximately 25 for the month, 30 Gs for the year. And if you break it down with your financing, this is where it gets even juicier, man. You got 
the 30 G's you're bringing in, you're going to need to bring in, of course, your down payment plus the costs, right? So you should have uh, 65,000 into the deal, although actually it looks like I got an error because that 65, that would be 40,000 for your down payment, 25,000 for those furnishings, but I forgot in this chart to include that extra 15 G's, right? So you actually uh, ignore that 65 in the chart. You're going to have $80,000 into the deal, right? So on there, it's showing a cash on cash return of 37 percent but that is actually going to be a little high uh it should be that should be divided by eighty thousand. that's gonna be 30 percent right so we're looking at a cash on cash return of 30 percent and all you need is eighty thousand dollars into this deal folks and like i said it's a newer build right we got a 2005 build so you know what you don't have to deal with you don't have to deal with any of the new Cleveland lead-based paint regulations that are upsetting quite a bit of investors, right? Because those only apply to properties built before 1978 in the city of Cleveland. This one, 2005, absolutely no worry for lead-based paint. So this, solid deal. Let's take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.